Hey guys, welcome back. We recently picked up an Ender 3 Pro 3D printer and today we're gonna build it. All right, so let's unbox it. All right, so this is our first 3D printer and we found a good deal on it. We actually, a lot of the upgrades we do on our other items require 3D prints and we thought, why not do it ourselves? Okay, let's have it. So that's the main bottom frame. Here's the power supply. Uh, the control module. And the motor, it looks like. All right, this is for the reels to sit in. Here's all our hardware. There's a little bit of filament that it came with. All right, looks like we've got it all unboxed. We don't really know what any of this stuff is. <laughs> I mean, kind of. We've got the base plate and the motors for the bottom. So I think this is probably where we're going to end up starting. The hot end is already connected. Uh, so I don't want to remove that. We'll just kind of work around it. Nice picture instructions. No words. Okay, no words. Okay, first is what we have. Okay. So, so the only thing I don't see is that 16. Let's Mother's unwrap there. stuff and see if we've actually got all the parts. Okay, so real quick, the part that I didn't know where it was because it looked like it was missing was actually in one of these. So it is here, um, like I said, just in there. So unwrap everything and you should find all your pieces. It's wrapped up like a uh, picnic. What? A picnic. Like you would wrap food with saran wrap. Okay, so. All right, let's see what tools we've got. Looks like three different size wrenches, probably for the eccentric nuts, um, and any tightening we need to do there. And then, goodness, a lot of Allen wrenches. Five different Allen wrenches, and a flathead screwdriver for this. As well as this is nice mm -hmm. uh, side cuts. Actually, really nice ones, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then it looks like all the rest of the parts are here. So what's what's step one? Step one is taking these two or these two? 15 and 16. I believe are the bigger ones. Nope, 15 and 16 are the smaller ones. And our M5 by 25. No way. Oh, these. M5 by 45, okay. These, and then putting them on this guy. All right. So these are your main uprights. All extruded aluminum with a nice coating. These look great. All right, so let's clear out the middle space. We'll get the uh, base in there. So I wanted to do this knowing basically as little as possible. So, yeah. we really don't know much about this. So we will kind of figure it out as we go. This is, come on. All right, so we've got this facing you. The first piece of upright that has the hole in it, uh, it's a little sh short of halfway and then maybe two inches from the bottom. That goes on this side. There are two holes about halfway up in this one mm -hmm. that the long, the with those M5s? M545. M545s go in. Now, we're gonna loosely put these in so we can waller everything until it fits right uh, in the end. So I'll hold that up and let her put those in.
Yes. So on the other one, there's two holes at the bottom, and they need to be towards the base. I swapped out to a multi Allen wrench tool. Uh, it's just got a bunch of different sizes in it. Just and, easier. Yeah, more like a <laughs> screwdriver. It's just easier to use. So what they gave you works. It's fine. Um, if you got something else and you'd rather use it, awesome. It will work too. Okay, now we need this and this. All right, next step looks like power supply and the front control panel. So power supply first. Looks like it goes right here. Looks like these two holes that we made sure to get in the right spot mm -hmm. are where the power supply is gonna go in. Just like with everything else, I'm not gonna tighten it all until we've got it all in place. So quick before we go much farther, thank goodness Aaron's reading the instructions. <laughs> um, the power supply is the same power supply whether you're in America or anywhere else depending on power you're using. It comes set on 230, so we need to flip it over and I give you a little flathead. We should be able to do that with that. It's got a sign here on the back that tells you where it's at. And then inside, it's there. And we flip it. All right, control module next. Uh, this is one of the things I've read a lot about that people don't like. Uh, it's completely open circuit board. And for some reason, it's got three inputs. That's probably because these are mass circuit boards. Um, so we'll pay attention to which one actually needs plugged in when we go to plug things in. So that's going to go on this front side. M58, little bitty one. This is not a hex bolt head. This one I am going to tighten down because nothing else is going to be in play around this. Uh, the picture makes this look bigger. <laughs> yeah. But this is the Z-axis limit switch. Okay. So, Z-axis limit switch. Connections on the back. This is plastic, so don't tighten it too much. Mm -hmm. And just a limit switch like all your pieces. Okay, so this has, these are called T-nuts. And this goes down in the extruded aluminum and then can be tightened in. So it looks like we slide it over here and you want the limit switch up and this piece down. This is actually a stopper. So when it, okay. So as soon as I put this in, I'm gonna slide it around so that it'll stay correct. Cause they slip around a little bit. And then at the bottom, it's just gonna sit there. Now again, we're going to have to move stuff around a little bit, so I don't want this super tight until everything's together. But also don't over tighten it because like I said, it's metal. It's plastic going to metal so we could warp it, break it. So we just want to make sure that the T-nuts got twisted so that it'll hold it in. This uh, doesn't tell us exactly what it is, but it is for vertical movement. Uh, it's going up and down and that's where our rod goes in as well. This is a threaded rod uh, that'll help it move up and down. So on this one, two holes here, and it goes in the bottom half of this one uh, where we had the two screws holes at the bottom. This is a very small Allen, so let me grab that one. That piece is also plastic, so be careful. The rod will sit down in there. So there's two screws right there. That's what holds and tightens the rod in. So it looks like I'm gonna they slide down. All right, so the bottom one of these is what holds it to the motor. The top one goes to the threaded rod. Next step is we're gonna start working up on the top pieces. There are two pieces of extruded aluminum left. Looks like one's the longer. The longer one's the one we're gonna use. It's what's gonna ride up and down with the hot end. The top piece will be the cap, uh, but we've gotta get front on first. So I'll slide this to the side and we will work on putting that together. Our motor assembly is what's going to go on here. 
if you look close at this, the sides are, there's holes pre-drilled. These are gonna be the important sides where they've got it big enough for the screw heads to go in. So these are the sides that are gonna go against these pieces. So this piece goes on this end. This, the head of this one goes right inside that perfect where the cutout and then the two wider screw holes. We're gonna work on this end. I just wanted to figure out which side goes where. So you can see where our two holes are gonna be at and then this nut, that's what fits right in there and then those fit. Now one of the nice things that they did with this because we've gotta put the screws in, which are these M6 or M4 by 16s and obviously they won't go all the way through, but the Allen wrench will. So we can put those down in here and then slide the Allen wrench in to get them tight. I'm gonna pre-put them in just cause I think that's gonna be easier. And then slide this in and get it on. Okay, let me show you something that's bothering me. So, I don't know if it's because of the way that they painted them or not, but these aren't really fitting great. And it's been happening on a lot of them. Definitely the right size, but it just does not want to fit. And I'm sure it's because of painting that's making these just a bit of a pain. So there, I finally got it to click in. Sometimes you just need to scratch off some of the paint and then they'll fit in much better. So let's give it a shot again. This piece, which I <clears throat> believe is what the Bowden tube connects to, screws in right here. So that's this side of it. Now we need to get the other side together. So first, we need to slide on the hot end. Feels pretty good. If we need to adjust any of the eccentric nuts afterwards, we will. It looks like next step is going to be putting on the belt tensioner as well as the belt. <clears throat> Here's what the belt tensioner looks like. Very similar to other ones, it's just already put together. Two bearings uh, with the stoppers. It goes on this end. Again with uh, T-nuts just like <clears throat> the limit switch that we put on earlier. I'm gonna slide those in. So if you loosen them up enough, they will actually slide in correctly and you won't have to twist them afterwards. But getting two of them to do that correctly is not the easiest thing. I got them both. Don't want these very tight yet uh, until we get the belt in. What the belt's gonna do, it's gonna start here on one, comes down, fishes through this gap around the motor. So there's where our gear is for the motor that's actually going to turn the belt. And then back in this groove underneath the wheels and then around our tensioner. And then back to the other end. Make sure the teeth are down uh, when you go to start this. All right, that is the belt on. All right, so now we put on this part. And it slides in there and you need to get your rod in at the same time in the right spot. And then the only way to get it to move down is to spin it and thread it down. All right, and now we put on the top bar. This side's cut out so that they can screw down in. So make sure get that on the right spot. 
It'd work either way. This way the bolts actually go down in it. Okay, those four screws are in. Now, let's see, that is step 10. Step 11 is going to be for the reel. Now this is what your PLA or whatever filament you use uh, sits on. Okay, so this just has a little channel, slides in and then you tighten it. Doesn't say too. So there's the channel. Line those up. It is very snug. There we go. And just tighten it up. All right, so I've got the T-nuts on and the screws. All right, all right, Alan. Well, there's a couple of ways you could do this. I could take these off and slide it down the side, or you can put the T-nuts in and then just get in there and slip them around to face the right way and tighten it up that way. All right, and tighten those up. Uh, you're gonna want it on this side. I don't know exactly how far I want it, but uh, the filament goes in this hole right here. So if you have the spool here, it will go in there clean. Um, next step it looks like is uh, to get all the wiring plugged in and it looks like everything is labeled X Z Z X E so let's get it done all right our limit switch our Z motor okay so here we should have a plug in there that should be an X We've got an E, an X, and an X. So the little X goes in here. The big X goes in this one. And then E goes here. We're going to cut these zip ties because this tube needs to come up here. Now this tube essentially you push this part down and the tube will slide in. And you push it in as far as you can. And now it won't pull out. Now also, this is a problem that a lot of these had that I read about is that they'll pop back out. So you wanna put something in that little gap so it can't be pushed down. And it came with a little clip. So the clip is on, it cannot be pushed out. Same thing for this side, it's got a big clip. So we will slide this clip in, and now it cannot slide out. And the last <coughs> plugs, we need to get the controller plugged in and the power in the back plugged in. The back power, two big yellow ones, slide together. And then for the screen, it is this ribbon cable, which I'm going to feed through here. And remember, we've got the three different plugs. All right, and it says to go into EXP3. And it's one, two, three. Plug into the third one. So let's get that in. These cables. All right. Now that is everything set up. I'm gonna go over it and make sure all of our eccentric nuts are in better spots. We don't want this to be so loose. All right, we've got everything tightened up. It feels pretty good. Might have to do some adjustments before, but uh, we've got the power in, so we'll, we're gonna come over here and flip the switch. Power comes on. 
Alright, so it says it's ready. I'm going to come down to motion. If you move access, we're going to auto home. All right, it homed. Now I'm going to uh, turn off the stepper motors so that I can move things around and get the uh, bed leveled out. I'm not sure if it's level or not. It's got these uh, nice big wheels on the bottom of each corner. We can tighten it and lower it uh, to get everything leveled up. Put the paper in and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise each corner until it just touches the piece of paper. So I'm moving this and as soon as I feel any kind of pressure on it, that's when I stop. So now I'm gonna do the same thing in each four corner as well as the middle. All right, got everything leveled out. It is slightly higher in the center than it is at the four corners. Uh, so we're gonna give it a test and see how it does. Uh, it came with USB adapter for the SD card, eight gig SD card on it. Uh, we're gonna put that in, see if there's anything on it we can do a test with. And if not, then uh, we'll find a test uh, piece that we can cut. I also pulled out the filament that came with it. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to feed it in. There is the little hole right here. I'll just push that in as far as I can. And then you can kind of see up here where it's going to grab it and push it through. All right, got the card in. And then over here on the screen, uh, let me go into our info screen and then we can go down and say there's print from media. Looks like user manual, troubleshooting mode, cat, dog, pig. Alright, we're gonna do the pig. So, pig, it looks like four hours. Print. Now it says that it's going to heat up the bed and the extruder and then it should start working. Alright, we can see that it is heating up. It's up to 30. I can feel it warming up, so that's awesome. And we'll see what happens. Alright, the bed is heated up and now it's taking the extruder up to 200. Uh, I can actually feel that the bed is warm, so that's working great. And now we've got a bit to go on the extruder. But that's going very fast. 195, I've got this on and we will see what happens uh, when it hits the right mark. Right around that point. Now, zeros. Yeah, when a spool goes on that, that'll be much better. So when you're done, you can just pull this filament out. Not sure if this is enough to do anything, but we'll keep it around if we need it. Got a black spool. That's what we'll probably do most of our stuff with to start. So we did a lot of research before we got this, and this was really the best one to get for a starter. Yeah, for the price tag that it's Right, yeah. so um, this gives us the opportunity to learn what we're doing, make some stuff that we could use before, yeah. you know, upgrading. Yeah, we'll probably upgrade this with, with this. Uh, w yeah, upgrade yeah. the 3D printer with the 3D printer. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and then laser and maybe the CNC. Mm -hmm. Got some ideas. We'll do some research, figure out what's best. Yep. All right, so if you have any thoughts or comments on the Ender 3 Pro, um, let us know in the comments. Yeah. Or if there's a file you think that maybe we should try printing. Uh, we don't, we only have a couple ideas of things we want to try, so yeah, we're pretty any, open. Any recommended update, upgrades would be awesome. Let yep. us know. Yep. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.